Hey guys, Will here. Round two of these passive boosters. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Nothing is impossible. Straight into the footage. This time we're using two Mavic Minis, the, FC hard the FCC hardware version and the CE hardware version for the ultimate in data. So starting off with the FCC Mini in stock and see how far we can get. Uh, this time, a uh, different location as well. We're shooting from a higher platform on the hill, which will give a direct uh, view, a direct uh, line of sight without any physical barriers between the drone and the pilot. And that should introduce like a less, oh no, 458, unusually low. Okay, so yeah, this was a little bit weird. I got 458 with the stock with the FCC Mini, which is quite low. Usually I'll get around 700 meters. So um, as you see, the, the, it keeps going up to like 542 and still shows full signal. So it's something a little bit weird. That Go was home. almost like a fluke, but I'm just gonna keep that data the way it is. Um, so this time we just used one flight. It kept going basically back and forth with the flight. And um, okay, I just swapped it with the FCC, the same FCC Mini with the 5.8 Yagi, it's a silicone ones. And we're going to be approaching its limit. And so that one is, should be around 1569. Uh, this time I have changed the, or the location of it, or I made sure the, look, uh, the orientation of those silicon uh, were 28 millimeters from the top of the antenna. 1569 as usual nothing too big and usually around double the stock distance and now we'll, we'll be swapping to the FCC mini and the next one should be the plastic version so this silicon version uses copper tubes this plastic one uses aluminum tubes and it could only be mounted has actually a top of it and it's made from molded plastic and um, from the top, it's actually exactly 24.7, about 25 millimeters. And as you can see, 1602, very similar to this uh, silicone Yagi. So the plastics are very similar. 20, I wanted to finish my thought. 25, about 25 millimeters from the top instead. Of, so I had the 28 millimeters for the for the silicone and then I had 25 for, it's limited based on the physical shape of it. Okay, next, FCC Mini. With the parabolic, the Sunny Life parabolic, super cheap, one of my favorites. And uh, this one shall be going for about 1587. So as you can see, so far the first two Yagis, regardless of it's a silicon or the molded plastic version, or regardless of the copper or aluminum, those those are all around they're all hitting around 1600 a little bit short of 1600 so this is 1587 for the parabolic sunny life now the periyage is where most people I, I i think a lot of people are getting more boosted signal and I actually got my first one if you look at my ultimate edition or ultimate test it's um i got actually worse but uh I got 1626, which is a little bit more. It's almost negligible. So basically the Parayagi, it performs the same as a Parabolic and it performs the same as a Yagi. Okay, switching to the CE Mini, which has 2.4 and 5.8 frequency. We start off with the 5.8 uh, stock. And as you can see inside the, the video, it's already, uh, yeah, it's getting a bit jittery, but that's 720. As you can see, the CE Mini was going farther than my FCC. So that should have been more of the correct thing. Uh, CE Mini 5.8 Yagi's, the plastic ones. And we're getting about 1503. 1503 for that. Not too shabby. Now the CE Mini and 2.4 frequency stock. Uh, so we got 720 from the 5.8 frequency and the 2.4 shall get 628 meters, a little bit shorter. And as you see, quite jumpy. The 2.4, I'm telling you, it's absolute rubbish inside urban environment or even mixed suburban anything. Uh, here is the 2.4. It's a 3D printed 2.4 Yagi. And let's see how that boosts. Um, we should get 1,244, about double of the stock, but quite less, 
quite less. I guess it's more. It's, it's still doing double if you think about it. It's still doing double of the other one, but it's quite less than um, the, the other 5.8. So the conclusion, what kind of conclusion we're getting? The test flight was sent off. Let's just use this as like the mountainside or something like that. We're on the mountainside and then off of, there's a platform that we actually can launch off of. It's me and my friend. And so what's happening is that this altitude of this, the hillside, is actually much higher than anything we're flying into. So what that'll do is just eliminate any of the factors of some kind of physical object, like a tree or a building or anything like that, at physically blocking the transmission. So we're trying to eliminate that kind of variable. Of course, there's so many variables to think about. So who knows what, what kind of things pop up or not, but I think this is a good spot and it will give us some good data. So I, I made a chart and you can look at it. And then, so we have all the, the datas from the stock. We have the data from the CE Mavic Mini and the FCC Mavic Mini. And as you can see, they're quite similar. You're getting quite similar numbers and you're getting quite similar results from boost from these accessory. And it, it brings up to that same conclusion. If you want to go back to that, other video that I posted and it's basically I once feels like it's just the pilot your choice or the user's choice on which accessory that you prefer it's just the Yagi and the parabolic are kind of going to perform something similar I wanted to also show on how on I wanted to show how we made it even more tight or more scientific we actually physically point out a landmark that we can see line of sight from that platform we flew the drone the drone pointed exactly to that landmark so we're flying like direct as the crow flies to that landmark i have the these antennas just like a line like an iron sight on a gun you just have the landmark between the antennas so you're having that's like very super detail when you're aiming and also uh if you look at my trigonometry uh we have the antennas nearly at a 90 degree uh, angle perpendicular to the ground, but just maybe slightly back. So I use um, maths to figure out roughly the, the kind of angle that the, the antenna should be at. And I figure it out about 1500 meters should and 50 about roughly around 50 meters in altitude from our launching height. We should be about two degrees. It's very, it's very little if you think about it. So the farther out, the that degree gets even less. If you go out to 2000 meters, you're at like, I think 1.5 degrees, you know, compared 1.5 degrees off of that 90. So you have to really think about when you're actually shooting out how you oriented your remote. So you have to aim it between that. You have to have these lined up and equally apart. You have to have these antennas directly pointing like so out to the drone to maximize it. And of course, there's so many variables like, like I keep I'm just repeating like a parrot. Um, as you find the drone and it even hits like the wind, they can actually adjust probably the orientation of the drone if you think about how it like angles and that might also affect the signal quality so uh, i got a one fluke um data and i bet that data is going to change if i fly off that spot again 450 me 458 meters is really low and i think it just happened to be i don't know for whatever reason someone's like microwaving the cat or something like that or some alien invisible ufo just flew in front of it or something like that who knows what caused that that kind of like uh short distance but I, i'm gonna dismiss that it's more likely that's a fluke but as you can check the other numbers actually the i wanted to say talk about the the difference between the different yagis so this yagi doesn't have any way to measure some guy suggested and thanks for suggesting down in the comments and if you have any suggestions as well criticism you know it's not going to hurt my feelings please comment below to know so this is i actually marked it with a piece of tape this is 28 millimeters off and this i will know to put it in so but the difference would be the difference is that with the plastic molded ones they actually have a top on it so when you put it down it actually stops at a point and that stopping point is 24.7 millimeters exactly so around 25 millimeters it's actually a slight variance in that so i'm actually i'm not 100 sure where the yagis should stay but you know the test results between those this the yagi my silicon copper tubes versus that molded plastic aluminum tubes 
they're so close that it's basically the same. 1602 versus 1569, that's like, that's basically the same. So I wouldn't worry so much about it. And of course, 2.4 frequency is absolute rubbish in any kind of near anything, anything suburban and up to like urban, 2.4 is absolute, absolute rubbish. I know some people are just gonna look and say like, oh man, you're getting like poor numbers. Like these are, your test sucks. Well, what this is gonna show you that person. So for example, there's people out there with 2.4 or with their 2.4 yog is getting three kilometers or maybe they get more than three kilometers and guess what they're living in a, um, a serial killer zone where you can just dump bodies in, in there and no one ever find it it's just basically like abandoned area the abandoned flat farmland and that kind of area yeah 2.4 is going to do well and so you can use 2.4 over that you can use 2.4 over water i would say even more specific water that doesn't have too much maybe commercial like freight boats or anything like that you just want zero interference and 2.4 it's just a popular frequency it's just going to be awful so manually select your 5.8 it's going to you're going to just going to get better numbers but I would say that the 2.4 Yagi's, you can see the, and the one available that my friend had was a 3D printed one. That one doubled, yeah, doubled the stock, but still even though despite, because of the stock is much lower, it's it's not getting, you can do much better with the 5.8. So that's what I suggest. So all this good detail. And I also put the inside, the, inside the chart, you can see I have my first flight. And if you check between the data, between those two, you can see it's not so far off. If you look at my 5.8 Yagi, the silicone, if you look at those, they were almost exactly the same. So my first location, which I am at ground level and, and flying through a pretty flat area, not too much, probably not too much physical interference or anything like that for, for sure, you know, a lot of people, I always feel like these kind of long distance things are, are like a spectator sport because people love watching and catching your errors because I'm sure they'll, they'll find some errors in something I did, which I, I'm i actually fine with because then I can fine tune and the next time around it can be better. So I'm fine with that. But you know, as you know, you adjust, the reason why people are a little finicky about the, the altitude, with rightfully so, is that as you raise up, you can clear more physical barriers like trees and stuff like that. So as you're flying out further, you actually, the line is side of that transmission it gets very close to whatever like even farther physical obstacle so yeah it becomes a thing that's one of the things you could do is actually just raise up the altitude if you start breaking transmission in an emergency if you had to but i don't want to go so far off i just don't i want to try to stick with the local laws as much as possible so yeah um i hope this data helps helps in your purchase and it just all it just is reaffirm my confirmation that these two are are really great accessories and they're just basically the pilot's choice on that so um i also wanted to say that uh, make sure you guys uh subscribe and stuff like that because um I have just so many other tests to do and whatever people suggest i'll, I'll try to do it so for example the one of the guys was mentioning that Oh, you should try doing a test with the, the how about you put the Yagi's in, in the different position, see if it has a different result. And then, yeah, I could do that for sure and see if there's any difference in the transmission power. No problem with that. Uh, also, somebody suggested that how about you, for the pair of Yagi's, why don't you put the reflectors a little bit, instead of mounting as, you know, have these two tightly with each other, you can mount mount it a little bit back so i'm gonna have to figure a way to mount the reflectors a little bit back so they're not so congested uh maybe put a rubber band maybe i'm gonna do a rubber band here and then just put a wrap around here so i can get this reflector back so maybe that can help combine it maybe they can work together and get some maybe there's some kind of extra boost or maybe no extra boost exists at all i don't know so that again is something to test i also need to do fcc mode tutorial on the the DJI Mavic Mini and the also the Mavic Pro as well. They still work. I gotta just update it because and make just an August 2020 version because just to help people out if you want to activate the FCC mode. And what I can do is I can just do the FCC, I can just do a stock and then reaffirm whatever stock is like probably 700 meters and then do a FCC. I'll do the full tutorial step by step on how to do it. And then I'll show you actually that the FCC is activated and then it's actually flying much, much farther. And uh, oh, also, I, 
I can't forget this. And that is uh, also before, as I showed in my previous video, the Mavic Pro, I have a Mavic Pro 1, uh, the Oculus Sync 1 uses a 2.4, it should be using a 2.4 year frequency, tested the 5.8 Yage's and of course they don't work. They're not the proper configuration. It's actually so bad that it's not even just the exact same or no effect. It's actually, it's, it's a horrible effect to it. It really reduces the, the distance and transmission. So I'm gonna be testing the Mavic Pro with that Oculus Sync. How about you, you mount some 2.4 Yage's onto that Mavic Pro remote and see, can we boost it? Can we boost it, get some more out of that OcuSync? Because it's actually, you can get something like, so for example, this particular fight with the Mavic Mini that uh, just maxed out like around the 1600, I got, I had a Mavic Pro go out in that same area, 3,500 uh, 3, meters, and I had to turn around because I was gonna run out of, I wouldn't be able to make the return flight and it still had enough power. That's the Mavic Pro OcuSync and, C, and the CE transmission. So that just shows you how much more powerful the OcuSync is. But let's see. But if I put the Mavic Pro through 100% urban environment, I actually start getting interference at one kilometer, which is nuts. Sometimes you just need to boost it. I tested this with the Mavic Pro and it's so little, maybe 10% gain is so little that it's not even worth putting on. But can the Yaki's improve it? And that's a question to ask. So definitely subscribe and like and share and all that stuff because as I send these things out into the strong wind, you see all the strong wind warnings. I'm basically risking this thing. And every time I send it out, I'm thinking that this might be the last flight. But so anyway, that helps the channel. So make sure you subscribe and also I have cool stuff coming up next and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.